Hello, I'm Greg McPolin, and I'm the COO of the Legal Managed Services Group here at Thomson Reuters Legal. I'm delighted today uh, to be interviewing Jason Barron, who's a lawyer at Drinker Biddle in Washington, D.C. We've got a couple of questions come immediately to mind. The first is, you know, we hear from a lot of our customers and clients that there's still lots of room for improvement, you know, in the e-discovery and records management technology space. Um, you know, we just screened your you, you, the the documentary that you were that you were prominently featured in last night. You know, the decade of discovery. Um, you know, do you agree with that sentiment that there's still a lot more to be done? And if so, you know, wh what do you see sort of evolving in the in 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 this space, technology-wise, in the coming years? I think that's a great question to start. the uh, The issue for me is competence uh, in the legal profession. The way to improve is to uh, have a better knowledge base among lawyers and law students at law schools of what the technology can do for them. I've been on a soapbox evangelizing for more than a decade about moving from manual review of documents uh, and keyword searching, which is inappropriate in some cases, to newer methods of technology-assisted review of predictive coding where you rely on power of algorithms, the power of algorithms, yes. to, to uh, you leverage that so as you can look at uh, collections of hundreds of thousands or millions of documents. Very few lawyers are actually um, applying the latest techniques in yep. their own space. Um, you're going to see more and more of that. You're also going to see a recognition, because we live in an Internet of Things, that um, there's data everywhere in the world. Absolutely. And so whether it's in civil practice or criminal practice or anywhere, you're going to have data sources that come into litigation and come into the lives of lawyers in particular. And so we need to know something about the technology. So when you say, how can we improve? The first thing is we can do a better job educating ourselves about what's out there and uh, using these techniques. The more precise question is a really interesting one, is whether the techniques that exist now for predictive coding, for using the best methods that are right. there, are you know good enough or can we improve? And of course the answer is uh, we can improve. Always, the, yeah. um, you know, we look at the evolution. One of the things the film said, 1968, you have a, pictures of people using computers, and by 1997, you have Gary Kasparov beating, uh, uh, sorry, Deep Blue, <laughs> Deep Blue beating uh, Gary right. Kasparov. Sure. Uh, you fast forward to Watson uh, beating Ken Jennings on Jeopardy. We can see that in 2015, what is the world of 2020, the world of 2025? We obviously are going to have better forms of artificial intelligence, right. better forms of technology. And so um, you're going to say we are going to necessarily improve, but the first step is to know what we don't know as lawyers and as other people that are in the legal field and to be aware of these new techniques. Absolutely. Fascinating. You, and you mentioned there two things that I want to... I want to piggyback on you. You, you mentioned law students, um, and I also think you mentioned or, or made reference to um, some of the ethics comments that we've seen come out, right, in the state of California, and also uh, promulgated by the ABA, right, that require lawyers to have an understanding of technology in their practice. Yes. I mean, w what do you think that means for the practice itself, right? We've got law students right now that. You know, five years from now, may be operating in a world where a legal world where algorithms, right, become much, much more important. What does that mean for the number of lawyers we'll need five, ten years from now? What does that mean for the law student, you know, who's in his second year or her second year right now? What, what will their practice, you think, look like? five right. and ten years out. Right. Well, those are all, you know, uh, really interesting points. Uh, the 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 movie, The Decade of Discovery, talks about the evolution of lawyers um, in the last decade in dealing with electronic records. Um, the joy that I've had in bringing this movie to dozens of places, including to law schools across the U.S., is to uh, capture the hearts and minds of younger people in a very cold and cruel world where law students are under a lot of debt and yep. they don't have many job opportunities. Uh, they uh, really would uh, be of greater value as subject matter experts in the digital world, knowing something about big data, 
something about e-discovery, something about analytics, and applying it to whatever their passion is mm. in the law. Right. So I try to make that point with younger people. The profession is under stress. And so for the no older doubt. crowd, the people are as old as I am, who graduated law school in 1980 in, a, in an era of typewriters, and I should say um, uh, books with little uh, keys on them uh. um, and <laughs> yellow and red shepherds that I was an expert <laughs> in knowing about. No doubt. Okay. I'm sure you so, are. So <laughs> um, in that world, we've changed from that world. The law, yeah. uh, law world is under stress. Law firms are under stress to be more efficient. Um, the leanest, the most agile law firms get that they have to use technology to, because it's a bottom line proposition. Corporations around the country, they uh, are demanding a bundling of legal services in yeah. ways that the profession is, uh, you know, going back and forth on. But uh, they expect that lawyers are going to look to optimize and use efficient methods. And part of that is using tools that you, you don't need a hundred lawyers on a case. For the law firms that get it, while there is an old business model where, yeah, you put a lot of lawyers on and you make a sure. lot of bucks. But that is going out the window. What is no what is uh, true at Drinker Biddle and what's true at the law firms that get it is that we offer visibility into data sets very fast and with very powerful tools Extremely that we can valuable. apply not just in litigation but across a range of disciplines. That's what I was talking about in my lecture this morning. And it seems to me that we as lawyers, we, can, um, we add value to the equation. We can... Right. Um, work with very smart analytical people to analyze problems, to issue yep. spot, and to give advice to clients. Yep. And so um, that's what I try to give right. as a message to right. to law students that there's hope that there's if they want to. I must say that the reasons you go to law school, in part. Uh, what I said this morning is that uh, a lot of law students, they don't like math right. and they don't like blood. <laughs> We've got to change um, the math part. <laughs> and, and the math part, I can't do anything about the blood part, right. but the math part, we really do need to be a little more comfortable with Absolutely. some of these techniques. Absolutely.